Hey guys, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. As you just saw me setting up for um, just the beginning part of my morning show, I got two guests on today, so I'm going to try to get through many of this, at, uh, mo- much of this early introduction type part of the show as soon as possible. Let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It's getting cold out there, folks. This weekend, it's going to be, uh, your highs are going to be into the teens with lows into the single digits and even go into the negative numbers. It is currently 9 degrees outside. There's a little light snow. It kind of freezes on your windshield, but not too bad. If you let it set out for maybe about 15, 20 minutes, you might have to re-scrape some of that snow off your uh, windshield. Uh, 90% wind advisory happened today until about 5 p.m. this early evening. Tonight, you can expect a little chance of snow, with snow likely continuing on for later this week. All right, big news that are happening within the city of Missoula. Um, In local news, the Montana street trial, as it's been coined uh, for the two suspects, uh, Tiffany Pierce and Augustus Standing Rock, who allegedly murdered and dismembered two people, being tried separately. Tiffany Pierce is being brought up on charges including attempted deliberate homicide, robbery, and uh, and aggravated burglary. Pierce allegedly broke into a random house, throwing in a man with a knife while demanding his phone and money. The woman who was watching the home during this incident was repeatedly stabbed in the chest and neck on July 23rd, 2017. Augustus Standing Rock pled guilty last December, and his uh, sentencing will be set for May 3rd of this year. He took a plea deal so he can get life sentence with a possibility of parole, while Pierce's trial date in the dismemberment case has been postponed and not yet rescheduled. The Montana Street Street trial trial is set for April 12th. In state news, Hamilton um, and Stevensville had at the worst between 18 and 26 inches of snow just in the last uh, 72 hours. Travel is limited to emergency traffic only for a portion of central Montana roads where severe driving conditions are present. You can go to mdt.mt.gov and it can kind of, uh, it will show you let me quickly throw it so some like closures, incidents. So if you're interested in finding out what roads are closed, incidents and all stuff like that. But I'm going to scroll on down to some incident reports. Um, there's a, uh, let's see, lanes are blocked for emergency personnel responding to an injury, multi-vehicle crash on US 112. So that's one of the many uh, incidents that are happening. So you want to check the roads just in case you want to drive a little bit safer as well. In national news, Big news that's happening as of like right now is that Michael Cohen is uh, ha- is having a public hearing in front of Congress to talk about uh, the mis uh, the mistrust and the uh, the truth behind who is Trump. So Cohen said, "You felt like you were part of something greater than yourself about the early days of Trump." He also said, "Ever since he took office, he became a worst version of himself." Um, he also said, "This campaign would be the greatest infomercial ever." according to Cohen, referring to what Trump said when he thought he wasn't going to win during the 2016 primary. Um, White House has uh, come out to say that Cohen is a convicted liar. Uh, Committee on Oversight and Reform Congressman Jim Jordan kicked off the meeting, mentioning that Cohen has lied under oath and anything said at this hearing would be a lie. Cohen has admitted to negotiating payments to two women ahead of Election Day to keep them silent about sexual relationships they said that they had with Trump years before. The biggest deal is that Trump wanted to build a Trump Tower in Russia and while campaigning was told to stop dealing, but did not according to Cohen's testimony. So this and more, you'll be able to see it. It's it's basically breaking as we're talking about it right now. But I got some guests, so I'm going to bring on uh, Colleen Kernan and Kent uh, Beaverton, uh, Beverton, sorry, um, and we'll have them on right after this.
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hey, we're back here with Kent and Colleen, and you guys are here to talk for March for Meals. That's right. Yep, and uh, many of the things, it's one of your biggest fundraisers to help support uh, Missoula Asian uh, services and, of course, Meals on Wheels. So, yeah. Colleen, let's kick it off. All right, so, as you just said, March for Meals is the annual fundraiser. We're raising both monies and awareness for the Meals on Wheels program. And I need to say as well that the Meals on Wheels program and all of our volunteers help support our agency's mission to, uh, oh gosh. The promote, <laughs> you, the, you know promote, the promote the independence, dignity, dignity and, and health. health of older adults and those who care for and them. And those who care for them. Yep. Well done. Yeah, because those who care for them really threw me off the first couple times. I'm just like, and they're caregivers. It's like, no, those who care for them because it's not just caregivers. It's That's right. Family members, people, and this is a good service that provides people with healthy options, but also a check-in. Yeah. So, Kent, so part of your job is to deliver these meals, but also to check in with some of the folks here. That's right. Yeah, you know, I, I uh, approach every house and I have a bag and a hot meal in that bag and and it's part of it and you knock on the door and and usually wait sometimes they're not there and you don't make contact all the time but uh, it's 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 good yep it really is I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with uh, adult children whose parents are receiving meals on wheels and that daily check-in is it's especially comforting to the kids and the family mm -hmm. to know that at least somebody is coming in because all of the people that we serve, every single one, uh, is homebound to a certain degree. Whether it's a temporary homebound status because of a surgery, say, or uh, they have a more chronic condition, many of these people, because they're homebound, they don't see anybody until the Meals on Wheels driver comes and it is just a day brightener. Mm -hmm. It's a day brightener for them as well as uh, that important safety check. Late morning, noon, about then is when we're there and it's a good time to check in I think people are moving along getting, getting, moving. Get, getting it going and, and uh, nice. it's a good time to check in so part of the fundraiser is that um, with the ever-growing um, need for meals um, you also need the funding so yes, how can do. people donate so people can we can do uh, traditional fundraising with a, with a hard copy piece of paper and you know ask your friends ask your clubs um, ask your your religious organizations anybody you can ask to, to help support to support this fundraising effort uh, there we also have a, a crowd a crowd raising option or crowdfunding option crowd funding, right. yeah yes, yes. and that is an online online way to raise funds for Meals on Wheels. Yep. And again, that website is MissoulaAsianServices.org. You can Google it, mm -hmm. but also you can pretty much type that all in in one yep. phrase and you got it. And you can also call Missoula Aging, 728-7682. All of the resources that you need to, again, whether you use a hard copy or the online option to fundraise, all of the resources that a person would need are right there at Missoula Aging, which is at 337 Stevens. Nice. Yep. All right, do you guys have anything else you want to mention? I do. One of the big <laughs> events, one of the big events with uh, March for Meals is our Community Champions Day. And this year, that will be taking place on Thursday, March 21st. 20 Yep, and that is a day when we bring our mayor and many of our elected officials, um, our champions, our community mm -hmm. champions, and we send them out on the routes with our wonderful volunteer drivers, mm -hmm. and uh, and it helps helps raise awareness and encourages our our, our uh, elected officials to continue to fund needed programs like Missoula, like Missoula Aging Services has with Meals on Wheels and several other programs as nice. well. But again, March is the big push for Meals on Wheels. And how much are you guys hoping to raise this year? Each year we need to raise $100,000 to keep the program running as it is. Um, and big, big push to raise $60,000 in the month of March. Wow. Mm -hmm. cool. Well, good luck, guys. Um, March is March for Meals. Um, yep. If you have any monies, um, be sure to donate. Yes, yeah, you thank you. All right. All right, so we'll be right back with uh, another guest that we have on the show, but here is a clip that'll uh, introduce him. My neighbor's house on 1427 Phillips Street looks like any other Missoula residential home on the west side. It belongs to a young couple with two adorable children. What I didn't know for nearly all of the 19 years I've lived on that block, and what many of you may not know either, 
is that my neighbor's house was once the site of St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church, active from 1910 until the late 1930s. At that address, a congregation of the first generation of fully emancipated black Americans held regular Sunday services. But the church was much more than that. It was the social center and the foundation of support for the town's small but burgeoning black population. Montana historian Anthony Wood observed that the few towns in Montana that maintained an active black population in the early 20th century were able to develop local black businesses, fraternal organizations, civic groups, and women's groups as a result of having a church to support them. In every one of the aforementioned categories, he wrote, the local church was not only a factor of their success, but vital to their very existence. Twice in its existence, the church's Sunday services were interrupted by members of the University City Chapter Number 16 of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, Missoula's local KKK chapter. By the end of the Great Depression in World War II, the church was gone, and Missoula's black population, already very low, plummeted even further. The racial composition of any American city is a product of its history. This may seem painfully obvious, but it's something that we need to say out loud and type in bold letters to fully appreciate. Hi, everyone. We're here with the person who you just saw doing a public comment earlier this month. But of course, this, this is the end of February, which also marks the end of Black History Month. And one of the things that uh, kind of you know, you produced this story back in November, yeah. but then you spoke upon it on uh, February, yeah. which is, of course, I talked about on my show as well. But I'm really glad that you're here Thanks. to Thanks uh, talk me. a little bit more about yeah. a black history Absolutely. in uh, the city of Missoula. Yeah. So uh, this is all about the church right. that was made back in 1910. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what other uh, details uh, can you mention about, uh, you know, about this as well? Well, I, yeah, like I said, um, 1910, it was formally established. They sold the, the old, old school building was sold um, to the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, and they started having regular services uh, pretty much right there. And the 5th District uh, AME had, was a, a collection of black churches in no the Pacific Northwest. So they had a, an organization and they had revolving door sort of ministers that would be going to different churches over that time. Um, so yeah, it, 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 they, it was you know Missoula had about at that time 0.5 percent of the population was black, um, and um, it was really a, a main way for black people to maintain a consistent presence in a, an overwhelmingly white environment. Um, those churches were very uh, essential to uh, any continuity for for black people uh, moving west, and you know that was could be found in, in any town in, in Montana where there were black churches. They were able to keep a foothold and, and stay um, in town. They had, the church was sort of an organizing center for them. Yep. And the, the craziest thing too, like it, that you mentioned is that the local chapter here of Missoula, the Ku Klux Klan, right. and that they, they came and donated money right. to the church, but not because they wanted to support them, because it was a power play. Well, it, it's, it's hard to interpret it and it's, it's probably a lot of different things. It's very hard to make sense of it. But you know, I, I was looking at the newspaper archives um, at that time. The Klan was becoming was na nationwide. I mean, there was chapters all over. There was one in Missoula. There was one in Bozeman and uh, uh, Kalispell. And um, the, one of the things they were doing regularly was going into black churches and giving AME churches um, in particular, giving them a donation. Um, and you know, I talked to Professor Tobin Miller Shear at the university, and one of the things about the AME church is it was, it was not a directly confrontational church. Um, they were more on building sort of uh, in the sort of Booker T. Washington vein of building up respectability within the black community, and sort of uh, they were, so in a sense they weren't threatening, and and the population size of course wasn't. So in that way, I think the Klan was like. Uh, Honor, or not honoring them, but recognizing their efforts at sort of staying in their place and, and not challenging their uh, status in the community. And that was one way of like, you know, showing, looking charitable. They always wanted to appear like they were the white knights, you know, um, with those hoods <laughs> right. and insignia. And, and that was a way for them to feel probably like they were, that they, they were friendly to black people as long as black people stayed in their place. Right. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's like very just kind of like, 
Um, you know, a lot of times dealing with persecution from a lot of their hometowns, especially down south. Um, even like there's just so much like history in regards to this like just recently they came out that new movie the green book yeah. which you know the green you know, the, the movie's very just like very movie very very hollywood yeah. but then the actual book itself is basically yeah. a right. guide right. to the south over like avoid this town right. do all yep. that stuff yep. and you know missoula you know everyone thinks that oh yeah missoula's such a cool town and, like everyone's chill everyone's right. okay with everything right. but then there's always that really like um, like in the back of a lot of people's minds in Missoula, which are like not in my backyard. There's a very strong not in my uh, backyard. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> there, there, there is, and and it, you know, um, well, it, it's it's always hard to say what Missoula would be like if we had more black people here now, but in, you can look in larger cities that you consider very liberal, like New York City, and it has some of the most segregated schools and the most segregated neighborhoods. Um, you know, the, it's built into the fabric <laughs> of this country, really, the, that, that white people worked very hard to keep black people from living among them. Um, I don't know if that's your question, <laughs> but... Uh, that, that answers a lot of... That, um, that, that's, not, that's why it's not a unique thing about Missoula. I mean, it, it, this, I looked into Missoula because that's where I live, but it can be found anywhere. I think any town history, you can find elements of this, because when you look at the newspapers, you just see how sort of second nature it was to believe that that there was something biologically inferior about black people. I mean it was a it was actually just a rationale for pre existing hatreds, I think. But um, you know, with the Darwinian evolutionary theories became very popular then a lot of just bogus science. A is lot being, of people right. just kinda tacked so on they would, the science that they know with science that yeah. makes no sense. Right. And then it's like just because it's this way and this way, therefore it can be transitioned into this yep. subgroup and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of um, like really bogus uh, social science going on information that, that was emphasizing that, that black people had in, innate criminality. Um, and that's why, like you saw, um, in one part of the fundraising efforts, uh, the mayor pointed out how the church had reduced black crime. Um, by 75 percent, he wanted to make a, a big point because he was sort of playing to the the prejudices that people would have about a black presence in town being a criminal element in town, and um, they, you know, they were, you know, it was a sort of a self-serving thing to say, well, we're we're going to support the church because they're going to bring down black crime because you know they'll help mitigate this sort of innate quality in black people, which is just you know very revealing, but it's sort of hidden in a way that you have to kind of know the greater history to see. What you know? What what's going on in the specific situation? Which brings us, which brings us back to the title of your uh, article that you uh, published, um, and it was basically hiding in plain sight. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was uh, as That's as plain a sight as it was, yeah. which is right next door to yep. where you live. Absolutely. Yep. It was right next door to my house. The church was, and I didn't know that at the time. In fact, I hadn't really been looking into the church specifically. I was just looking into the. Missoula's black population and trying to find trends over the census data and to see, you know, in 1940 there was a big, a fairly big drop off and so I was trying to figure out, well, where were people living then, you know, and I was just going through the manuscript census and that's when I came across the, came across the block that I live on and uh, there was a retired minister, 1427, it's a pastor, so hmm. and I'd heard that there was a black church but I, I hadn't looked into it closely enough, and then I looked at the, the Sanborn maps. These are these old fire insurance maps that show sort of property information at, at various times in history. And I looked at it for, you know, uh, I think it was 1912, somewhere in there. And there it was, St. Paul AME Church, right next door to where I live now. And it's like, the, you know, we, we knew it had been the former Lowell School building. I didn't know it had been a black church and that it had such a... a an amazing history, really, for three decades. So I've been noticing that, uh, of course, I liked your uh, page, uh, Black History of Montana. Oh, yeah, in Montana. You. Black yeah. History in Montana? Yeah, Black History in Montana. Yeah, because you said you had a little trouble with finding the name. Well, I <laughs> I started it up. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. I, I knew I would, I thought, well, maybe this would be some other way to sort of get the word out. And so I sort of began setting it up and uh, just had to put a name in. And so it sort of I had it as Montana's Black History. And then I like I wanted to change it to more something like you know it's it can be found anywhere you look or you know uh, history that's right in front of you something like that right um, and it was too much of a change um, so and I but I also thought that Montana's Black History sounded a little too authoritative I'm not a historian I'm not an expert I'm a journalist but I'm not a I'm certainly not an expert and I so why, so I just put Black History in Montana to make it a little less nice. 
yeah. authoritative side. And of course, you can find out more information on um, on these stories as well. You have your uh, your website where people can find this as it's well. It's on the yeah the the article that I wrote uh, is on the Medium website and is called Hiding in Plain Sight. <clears throat> Sorry, Hiding in Plain Sight, Saint Paul, Saint Paul AME and uh, the Forgotten History of Missoula's Forgotten Black History. <laughs> I think I'd remember my own title, but <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you can find it, you know, I, I Googled it. I just, uh, from what I did, I just Googled Black Church Missoula. Yeah. And it kind of popped up it right It came there. right up. Oh, mm -hmm. good. So yeah. it's really easy to find. It's a great article. You should totally check it out. And the one thing that I really did notice is that you are getting a lot of coverage. A couple of news media kind of yeah. reached out to you or you're yeah. able to uh, tell your story. Yeah. So what, uh, like, I know that you uh, want to um, find out more information because the kind of the stories kind of really picked up some traction for sure. A little so bit. So you're looking to find more information. Yeah, yeah. I, I def well, I certainly would hope that anyone <laughs> who watches or anyone who knows more about this uh, older history of the church would love to hear from them. Um, definitely, I, we can't find pictures of it. There is no. There, there really aren't any visual records of the church apart from descriptions in the newspaper. They had uh, an annual barbecue for several years in Green Oak Park, Southern Barbecue, that brought out, you know, the first one was a, five, the paper said 500 people um, came to this thing. And I'm like, that seems large enough that, that there had been some pictures or some documentation of that. And I can't find any. I think it's important because um, it's, it's, it's important for us to know that, you know, this is a time of a lot of population <coughs> changes, uh, you know, the westward expansion. And black people, if things had gone differently, they had a chance, and they probably would have lived here in larger numbers. Um, and so I think we need to look into that history a lot more and try to figure out why, you know, why is Missoula so white? Why is Montana so white? All right. So once again, you can go online. Uh, you can look up um, the AME. Uh, yeah, St. Paul AME. Church. Yeah, hidden in, hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm. St. Paul AME Church. Awesome. And Missoula's forgotten black history. Okay. Well, is there anything else you want to mention? Any... Uh, no, I just uh, I'm currently do, doing looking into uh, a specific uh, black resident that lived here for a long time, uh, McNorton uh, Chester McNorton. He had a brother, William McNorton, who uh, was one of the first. It's very famous in Sanders County. They call him something which I won't say on, right? Which is terrible. But he there's only, a lot. There was a yeah. lot of articles that you post on there, yeah. and it was ridiculous. And oh, it's like yeah. you, you can. You can teach blah 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 yeah. this, but you can't raise them up to be a certain blah blah blah. Oh, yeah, right. All this stuff. Oh yeah, Ben like Tillman's. Yeah, yeah, the guy, the congressman who came through Montana, yeah. went he to the was, Union Hall, and just right. And and it just sounded like everybody loved his speech, and he he just was wickedly racist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, all that is all in this story. There's a lot more to this story. Yeah, yeah. There was it took. Yeah, it was a lot. It's a 24 minute read. They say so. Wow, it's a long. All right. Well, thanks, Greg. Yeah, I really thank you for it. having me. So this it. is Greg Martin. Um, you look up more information uh, about this um, as it evolves yeah. on uh, Black history in Montana. Yeah, awesome. All right. So we'll be right back. Oh, right after this. We, we apologize if anybody's from Japan, please don't. Please don't. I think we're, I think we're learning a lot about ourselves <laughs> and, and about, about our society and what that says about Danny DeVito. <laughs> and I'm going to do, I'm gonna do some man. electricity <laughs> around here. Got to get him really You got cool. my hopes up, man. You shattered my heart. Okay. okay. And then I got to... Got to... <laughs> Okay, and then the the just one more yeah. thing no, to, really, really to really get it in to really get it in there. Oh, nice touch. Oh, detective. I'm done. Ooh. Oh, yeah, That's I a masterpiece. Nice, nice. All right, show it up. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, look That's at that. True artistry. Um, well, I've, I've worked in Butte for a long time. See, this is just not. <laughs> it's a little goopy. Um, and I've had the opportunity to work in the arts. Um, I went back um, the fall of 2016, and I got invited to work at a house museum that my friends were um, managing. They started a like a humanities um, in uptown. In uptown Butte, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's the Clark Chateau. It's one of the um, Copper King's sons' uh, mm -hmm. mansions. Yeah. So. Um,
Hey guys, welcome back. Um, as you can tell from this very close up uh, shot of me, you can see it's about time for some city council. Um, the city council report, I'm gonna be talking about um, some public comment, some things that the city approved on, uh, and of course, you know, just your typical stuff. So let me just get my notes already to go. And uh, Maisie Smith, who volunteered, uh, that helped keep Mountain Line open uh, during um, weekend hours, during, um, uh, you know, there, there are many volunteers many volunteers that volunteered at the, um, the, the Mountain Lion uh, Transfer Center. They opened the building as a temporary warming shelter for people in transit to the Salvation Army. So they basically wrapped up their uh, services for people uh, last Thursday. So here is uh, Maisie Smith talking about uh, homelessness in Missoula. First, I want to thank the council and the Mountain Lion Center and its employees for opening the transfer center for our community members. I want to thank the council for their food donations as well. But more so, I want to thank my fellow volunteers for giving countless hours and dollars to, ensure, to ensuring that the warming center was a welcoming, safe, and positive place for the members of our community who needed it. Going forward, there are some crucial things we need to prioritize if we are going to prevent harm to the homeless folks in our community. First, there needs to be a centralized hub that provides needed services such as food, shelter, health, and housing services. With a centralized service center, we streamline paths of communication between health services, transportation services, and people that work directly with our homeless community members. This allows people to receive the services they need while simultaneously getting them into permanent housing. All right, so that was uh, one of the comments, uh, Maisie Williams, uh, Maisie Smith, sorry. A very common public comment this winter uh, was about homelessness and the cold weather and providing a warm place for people to stay during emergency cold conditions, uh, winter advisories, that kind of stuff. Um, so this also works the, the, the basically the last uh, week of Salvation Army. They're funding um, for opening their center for uh, a warming center, um, started just this last uh, December, maybe late November, and uh, only had a 50000 They raised $50,000 really fast and were able to uh, have staff and people available 24-7 to provide services for folks who are in need of a warm place and shelter. But by March this week, by the end of this week, um, Salvation Army will no longer be used as a warming center. And uh, Josh Decker, who was also a volunteer with, uh, through Mountain Lion and all that stuff, uh, says that um, um, Missoula still has to be accountable for people um, who are on the street, in, especially during cold snippets during this winter. Um, I'm here to ask council to do something that's free. Great, right? Uh, which is establish the cold weather metric that you're using to define emergency weather. If tonight doesn't qualify, I don't know what does. And uh, it should be easy to come to a fairly you know, liberal definition of emergent weather that would serve to protect people. Um, if council was to use emergent weather characteristics to keep other facilities open, you know, I think we need to make the first step of defining that metric. What do we mean by emergent weather? How cold is cold enough so that all people need shelter? All right, so that was Josh Decker. Um, Let's see. But also, Josh Decker went into uh, saying that the city should be should clarify about how cold or how much winter justifies warming standards to be available to the public. Um, Ander Hosell, um, she uh, comes to the meeting and she says this. Um, I stand here today in solidarity with my comrades who've spoken tonight, as well as um, multiple times over the last couple of months to city council about uh, the need to care for all members of this community. When the press release um, came out that the warming shelter at the Mountain Line Transfer Center was going to be opened, Mayor Engen, you said um, that it was the duty of the city government, the local government, to provide the best solutions for all of the city's citizens. Some of those citizens are sleeping outside tonight. Some of them slept outside last night. Um, not having a warm place to be 
during the day a safe way to get to the Salvation Army by 10 p.m. is still happening for lots of folks in our community. So when we say that our responsibility is to provide for all of our citizens, we really need to mean all of them. All right. So that was Anders ta um, reflecting on that as well. Mayor John Engen later in the meeting, um, a lot of times uh, the city council and the mayor do um, don't directly engage in conversation during public comment because it's a platform for people to speak candidly without being interrupted. So Mayor John Ingen responds later in the meeting during um, uh, uh, reports from the mayor, um, and this is what he had to say in response to homelessness. As you all know, we contracted with the Pavarello Center to provide GAP resources, a uh, place for people to stay. Um, after we elected to close the emergency um, shelter at the transfer center. The transfer center was indeed an emergency shelter based on really rotten weather. Um, we had to scramble to figure that one out given, um, given uh, the fact that we learned of the gap between the time the Salvation Army was open and other facilities being available. Uh, the Pavarello was exceptionally helpful in opening their doors. Um, they, they simply cannot let some folks in who have been put on what's called permanent out. Um, there are real reasons that people are put on permanent out. Um, and we hope through our process um, and through our work with the planning committee um, on our 10-year plan to end homelessness that we can come up with a solution for those folks. But it's really, really hard. And, of course, during the public meeting, um, a couple of public comments uh, came up to the uh, – during public comment session mentioning that um, there are not many places in the city of Missoula that help people who have substance abuse. Um, so they can't stay at the POV if they uh, have an addiction problem, but then they can't uh, get addiction help without a place of resident of their own. So it kind of goes in a circle because um, at MCAT we've had uh, a, a handful of folks that uh, are – out of homes, um, are houseless, and they also, I mean, of course, they mentioned that it's, you know, it's hard to kind of um, get the help and the treatment that they need without a home and a residence, um, and it's also hard to get a home or residence without being sober. It, it, it's a very complicated, um, kind of a mixed bag for a lot of the people, and um, the POV has helped a lot of uh, people, but they also have only so many resources to extend to folks as well. And Pavarella is considered a dry shelter as well, so they don't uh, put up with anybody who appears to be drunk, high, or anything. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to leave off on. But of course, so far, Engen has uh, fallen back on the 10-year plan to end the homelessness city. He's working with the Pavarella Center, Missoula Interfaith Collaborative, and Salvation Army, uh, Salvation Army about providing folks who have, or for lack of, of their, uh, lack of a better words, worn out their welcomes at the POV and maybe a couple other places. Um, usually what the POV does is if there's a fight, they get rid of the person who, the, the two people who were fighting, um, and they either kick them out for a couple months or they kick them out permanently, hence the permanent out, what the mayor also mentions. Moving on, Jesse Ramos reflects on city paying off its debt to Missoula Water Company. He's happy that the city of Missoula uh, taxpayers don't have to uh, pay into the city's water company. I've obviously been critical of the water company, but this is great news for the city that we're finally issuing the long-term debt, um, so we don't have um, a additional exposure of that hundred plus million dollars of floating rate notes, where a change in interest rates could could expose us to a lot of uh, risk. So that that's great news. Happy to support that, um, and I'm hoping that we can divide the question on uh, and vote on item four separately, uh, just because I think that the taxpayers of Missoula County have paid more than enough into this Fort Missoula Park um, without another additional $21,560. So if we could please divide the question and vote on item four separately, I'd appreciate that. All right. So that, this is during the consent agenda, as you could read at the, uh, the lower third. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, Jesse Ramos is a support of the Missoula Water Company. And so far, the Missoula Water Company is uh, um, accumulating $6 million a year. $5 million, $5 million is to pay off the debt 
which is owed to the which is owed to uh, uh, Carlyle Group for buying the water company. Uh, the water company is 130 million dollars. Oh, I mean, with all the the amount of money that was put into the condemnation and the trial and the water company itself, the city paid for it. And now, uh, for the next uh, X amount of years, uh, the city is going to be uh, paying 100 and. Uh, Thirty million dollars, which uh, added up, it's going to take about 26, 27 years for the city to pay off their debts. Um, anyways, moving on, um, as as you know, March for Meals has ha- is happening. Um, the kickoff in March. It's their annual fundraiser to help promote the. Um, to help support the Meals on Wheels program, which offers uh, meals to aging adults. And Susan Kohler, the executive director of Missoula Aging Services, uh, spoke um, during this proclamation. Uh, on our Meals on Wheels program, it's growing uh, substantially every year um, by the number of older adults that are finding themselves in a position where they can't cook any longer, but uh, feel like they're still sta- safe at home. And this meal does make a difference in terms of nutrition and a, and a safety check. I want to thank you for that. I also want to point out that we have to raise over a hundred thousand dollars every year in order to keep pace with this increased. Um, number of individuals, and it seems to be increasing every year. Last year uh, was a little over 800 people that we served, and on, uh, we're on track this year to serve more than that. Um, so we are looking also for volunteers to help drive um, so the various routes. There's not a place in the county that we can't get to, and today's a good example of the commitment of our volunteers. They're out there, and they are driving, and we were able to deliver to everybody um, who is to receive a meal. In fact, in my 35 years, I don't think I've ever known a day where they haven't delivered meals. So um, I'm really proud of the work that they do, and it's a good um, exercise in what volunteers can do into helping our community. Many of themselves are, are older adults themselves. So- All right, so that was Susan Kohler with um, Missoula Asian Services. Um, Last, but certainly not least, is that um, Missoula Asian Service will be uh, on this Friday. Susan Kohler will be on this uh, this Friday show. It's uh, M- it's uh, Wake Up Missoula's five year anniversary. Um, so we kicked off five years ago, and it was just as bad in terms of uh, winter weather. There's a lot of snow that dumped about five years ago, and we'll talk about that a little bit more this Friday. But, of course, March is for March, March, is March for Meals, as M- Missoula Asian Service looks to get money to promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. Of course, the city plans to amend the total Missoula Rev- uh, Redevelopment Agency, MR- in, uh, MRA. Uh, they're the ones that have been approving TIF funding for projects projects and uh, redevelopment within the city of Missoula. Um, so right now they're looking at their budget for the fiscal year 2018, which is also carrying over from partly 2017, which they're increasing revenues by six, uh, $670,000 um, and decreasing expenditures expenditures by $439,000 in order to recognize additional revenue based on the final valuations of mill levies. But here's Jill Dunn from MR, MR, MRA to talk a little bit more about this. These amendments are again for fiscal year 2018, so that's as of June 30th, 2018, that fiscal year ended. There was one bond issue that you approved during that fiscal year, and that was for the North Reserve um, Scott Street District. That included phase two and three for the um, Scott Street Village Housing Project. And so the, the, that has been rolled into these. And so this is required of us to do at the end of our audit to kind of bring everything together and bring it before you. All and right. So, and it was brought forward at the city council meeting it, they didn't talk too much about it hence it got a uh, pr- pretty quickly approval through the city of missoula so um that pretty much wraps up all the things that i had to talk about for your city council report if you're interested in finding out more about the city of missoula you can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us it is a wonderful website where you can find out more information about what's going on within your city of missoula all right, now we're going to throw it over to a brand new dub and stuff. It is from the movie Killers from Space. Without further ado, here is this, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk about events. Well, you're not crazy. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but you're incredibly unhealthy. Oh, what do you think is causing all this stuff to happen? Uh, man, I don't know. Global warming, 
global cooling. You know, it's all that kind of stuff. Hmm, that's um, that's interesting. I didn't know the outside world can affect the inside of me. Well, when you put food in your stomach, you don't feel hungry. So that kind of is the outside world affecting the inside you. Well, I suppose, but I don't even eat that much. I'm usually too busy playing video games. Well, you know you probably should eat. It is important because you could die. Well, I'm not overweight. Uh, how do I explain this? You know that scar? That means you've been playing too much Super Smash Bros. That energy has to go somewhere. Well, my couch does get all sweaty. You know, there's a concept of you are what you eat, but in terms of your scar, it's more like you are becoming... What I'm playing? Well, you see, the human body has a crazy ability to adapt. Uh, general stuff, general stuff, general stuff. Oh, uh, oh okay. Hey, guys, I'm here. we start the meeting here. Whoa, so glad to meet you. All right, you're going to hear our spiel on this whole, like, um, the kind doctor has put me up to snuff. Well, I'm sure he gave you a general overview. <laughs> nice yeah. to meet you. Charmed, I'm sure. Did they not hear my Sir, joke about... Sir, we are about... extremely excited to test this new theory No, please, about... uh, let's get a drink first. <laughs> oh, good choice. All right, here's a general cigarette for yeah, you. Thank you very much. I'll enjoy this. You have to light it. It tastes kind of funky. And, <laughs> well, you know, wait, should I be smoking in front of the doctor? I don't think that's a good idea. Is it considered unhealthy? Oh, yes, very much so. Are you the Surgeon General? No, he's just the General General. Well, then what do I have to lose? Right, General? <laughs> oh, am I supposed to answer that? Uh, uh, bad hey, let's stuff. hear about this video game project you're working on. I don't see why video games can really hurt the enemy. Uh, I suppose we can get them addicted. You and... see, the human body has the ability to adapt. And in this case, by playing video games without food or water, you start adapting to that video game. And perhaps, maybe, through further testing... So what you're saying is through a JRPG, I can become a sexy female fighter girl? That would be pretty sweet. I'm listening. Oh. You know what? We probably should do this. I'm pretty sure the Russians are already on this. And the Cold War raged on as the Americans struggled to find a way to plug in RCA cables to the human body. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for your Missoula events. Kicking things off for your uh, Wednesday mornings is Tiny Tales at Empower Place. Um, parents and tots sing, tell stories, rhymes, and enjoy open reading and socializing time. Join the fun at Empower Place at the Missoula Food Bank, which is 1720 Wyoming Street. And this happens from 10.30 to 11. They also have a bunch of uh, food there at Missoula Food Bank for uh, parents alike. And they also have cooking classes, which are amazing. I, I took one. It was pretty cool. All right, preschool play group at Rootstacker Sports Center. It's $10 per child or $15 if you have siblings. And it's a playground. The gym becomes your playground, and it's indoor fun stations, activities to the gym. Parents and children choose the activities that interest them the most. Um, foam pits, um, trampoline, swinging, sliding, climbing, and playing on mini inflatable items. All right. Hands on science, mixed bag science, uh, universe, uh, the uh, spectrum. Spectrum Discovery Center hosts a an area um, so that there is open for visitors of all ages to come explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. They are talking about some of their favorite science activities taking place all day at the Discovery Bench. So if you have a favorite, they might be able to accommodate you um, today because it's going to be a mixed bag of science. <laughs> Russia's role in the digital world. University of Montana is doing a lecture uh, with speakers Julie Sear, attorney, uh, co-founder of Montanans for National Security and former defense intelligence agency ana uh, analyst. Um, while certain Russian actions, such as the hacking result of the 2016 election, are now well known, few people realize that the depth and breadth um, of Russia's targeting of Americans and others through cyberspace. The reasons Russia engages in such tactics are not well understood. The what and why of Russia's cyber campaign need to be further explored in order to effectively counter it. So there's no motive. That's basically what it is. Russians hacking Americans and there's no clear motive of why they're doing it. And so they're going to be talking about this starting at noon at the University of Montana. Uh, let's see... I'm not sure. It doesn't necessarily say where it is. All right. 
I'll find out a little bit more. But Scrabble and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center starting at noon today as well. Lunch, best dance floor in Missoula. Uh, moving all the way to the Higgins Building at 5 p.m. tonight, they're doing a stutter adult support group. This is an open support group for adults who stutter to also include their families and speech language patho uh, pathologists. The adult meeting is fourth Wednesday of the month, and it's going to be at the Higgins Building. And this is the part of the National Stuttering Association motto. If you stutter, if you stutter you're not alone is what our local support groups are all about. For many, NSA chapter meetings are the first time they ever talked about stuttering with other people who stutter. And they're on Facebook at, under NSA Montana. All right. Writers Anonymous, um, Missoula Public Library, Public Library is doing a, if you're interested in receiving constructive criticism on your writing, it's anonymous, so you know what you wrote, but you get to hear about how people react to what you write, and they're going to meet in the boardroom from 6 to 8 p.m. tonight in the Missoula Public Library. Health. Child Health in Zamb Zambia notes from the field. University of Montana is hosting a, their global public health um, series, and they're going to be having a speaker who will be talking about uh, health of children in Zambia with implementing a program focused on prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV and early infant diagnosis of HIV, and just to figure out uh, and educate uh, how people are pre uh, preventing the spread of HIV in Zambia. Uh, lectures on new thoughts on Lake Missoula shorelines. M the Montana Natural History Center is doing a, um, a lecture tonight at 7 p.m. at the Natural History Center with Jim Sears, professor of geology at the University of Montana. We'll talk about the recent research that leads to new thinking about the famous Horizontal shorelines on Mount Jumbo, Mount Sentinel, and elsewhere in the region created during the Ice Age by a huge lake that formed behind an ice dam on the Clark Fork River on the Idaho border. Revival stand-up comedy at Open Mic at the Badlander, um, 7.30 tonight at the Badlander. They're doing some comedy. And then they have karaoke later on at 9 um, p.m. They got some trivia at the press box. They got some trivia at the uh, Broadway Bar and Grill. And they got trivia at the Silver Slipper. Um, Atmosphere will be playing at the Wilma. It's going to be some hip-hop music. Um, so you can enjoy all that and more. Um, but I'm going to throw it over to another art clip for you guys. I believe um, this is from the Zootown Arts. Let me. Did I already show this one? I'm pretty... I don't know if I showed this one already. All right. So... Oh, yeah, I did show that one. Okay, so this is from the Zach, and it's the Zootown Arts Community Center art installation, which will end March 9th. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some more events that are happening. We're kicking things off with a little bit of Thursday. Uh, I don't have too much to talk about for Thursday because they're doing some open hours at the Makerspace at the Benzo Public Library. If you're interested in learning about some of their computer electronics at the library while at the same time doing some 3D printing, open hours in the Makerspace is from 10 to about 1 p.m. because they always have a class around 1 p.m. in the Makerspace. But pretty much it's wide open today from 10 to 1, and then again from 2 to 6. Can't miss it. 
Tiny Tales is going to be in Musical Public Library. They usually uh, um, do it at Musical Public Library Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, I believe. And this is for birth to 36 months. What is your child learning? Hearing stories and rhymes helps your baby develop language skills and your toddler develop their vocabulary. Toddlers learn nine new words a day. And Musical Public Library wants to be there to help. Um, starting at 10.30 tomorrow morning. But also, they have Tiny Tales at uh, Empower Place at 10.30 today as well. Searching the library, Musical Public Library, this is a class that presents an introduction to the library services available through com the computers. Topics include how to search the catalog, include tips and strategies to find the items you are looking for. Registration is required by calling 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665. And you can find out more by going to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org, Missoula Insectarium, MissoulaButterflyHouse.org. Do you have a are you have a bug enthusiast at home who loves nothing more than to look for bugs in their backyard? The Missoula Insectarium is launching an after-school club for kids who are interested in all things bug science and exploration and fun. This is K through five to learn experiment and create um, exciting opportunities for kids. Um, this is five consecutive Thursdays, and this is the wild world of bugs. And it's already started this month, and it's going to go on every single Thursday. Um, instead for, I believe it's going to be March uh, 7th, but pretty much every single Thursday um, where you can do the wild bugs, um, kind of like a workshop for kids. It'll be fun. All right, so that pretty much does it for some of your generic events. Uh, um, well, not generic events, but you're more of your spotlight events going on here. But some of your generic events that are happening tonight, this is the generic part, is just, you know, um, the Don Wall. It's it's going to be a movie shown at the University of Montana's Film and Fitness, KG, a KV, KFGM Artist Residency Series at the Union Hall Ballroom is going to be playing some rock music at 7 p.m. at the Union Hall. You got Roxy is going to do it out of the Roxy. Rafiki, which is going to be an art film. Um... August, a song county will be at the University of Montana f a theater. I believe it oh, looks like they are doing a theater performance. Um, sometimes you miss them because the, the University of Montana um, theater department of um, uh, theater and dance they usually put on shows for two weeks and they usually happen on the weekends. So family. So this this is August. A zog. A zog. Oh my God, I'm the worst. Uh, a zog county. Totally just like butcher everything. But anyways, the place called August, Family Secret, Old and New are unburied in this aftermath of Oklahoma. Uh, partridge uh, parent uh, patriarchs, oof, disappearance in this Tony Award and Pulitzer Prize winning comic drama. The Kazakh, all two human members of the Weston, Weston clan love one another fiercely, but don't like each other with... a a greater intensity. So you get to see a comedy, drama, a bunch of yelling, a bunch of screaming at each other. So three generations are convening under the same roof. And this performance is basically a kickoff tonight. I mean, tomorrow night, um, February 2... No, actually tonight. I didn't, even, I didn't even see this online until they just posted it um, just recently. Uh, so performances are uh, kicking off tonight. Um, and it happens at 7.30 p.m. pretty much all weekend long. It happens from February uh, 27th through March 1st. And then also they have another weekend. Oh, nope, that's it. It's pretty much going to be playing one weekend. You only have it from 27th till March 3rd. Um, this Sunday matinee is at 2 p.m., but they also have another Saturday matinee at 2 p.m. as well. But other than that, most of the performances at, at 7.30 p.m. All right, so... You got karaoke happening tonight as well. You got karaoke at the Dark Horse. You got Party Volcano at the Badlander, DJ music, mch, mch, all that kind of stuff. So, whew, I'm pretty much done. I'm I'm as done as I'm going to be. But I do want to mention that uh, you can find out more information by going on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. Tonight is also orientation. So you can go to MCAT.org to learn more information about MCAT, but also uh, learn about our uh, spring break camp that's happening during spring break at the very end of March, between March 25th and the 29th. If you have a kid who is between the ages of 9 and 14, you are welcome to uh, um, sign them up and have them join our fun little um, experiment um, that is uh, a spring flux. So the kids get to learn filmmaking, uh, some stop animation, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, how to protect themselves on YouTube. A lot of kids are just like, I want to be YouTube famous, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, but you have to come up with a persona and you can't use personal information 
where you're from, all that stuff, and that's something that we try to heavily um, in be, embed a lot of the kids. We want the kids to uh, be, be able to express themselves and be able to kind of show off their uh, uh, creative projects while at the same time protecting themselves. Kind of like a hiding in plain sight kind of deal. So it's a great opportunity for kids and you can find out more by going to MCAT.org. Orientation is tonight at 5.30 if you are a person who is interested in just wanting to do a TV show, make a movie, uh, become more uh, of a social media presence online. MCAT is a great resource for any of you who are interested in being a part of MCAT, our fun little community where we just like to exchange ideas and create short, fun films. All right, so that's the spiel, um, I pretty much ran most of the hour. Um, I only have maybe a couple more minutes left in the hour into my show, but I just want to say thank you once again to Colleen and uh, Kent from Missoula Aging Services. They're talking about March for Meals. They were trying to raise over $100,000 to supplement their annual um, necess- need to um, continue their Meals on Wheels program to help aging adults to regain the, to um hold on to their independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. So it's just a, it's a great, it's a great program. We're always glad to have them on here as well. We're going to have a big show on Friday. We're going to have Missoula Agent Services on. They come every single month. They've been doing this for over five years, a good chunk of Wake Up Missoula's history, and there will be a We'll have uh, Susan Kohler, and then we'll have, of course, uh, one of the most regular guests on MCAT uh, um, through Missouri Agent Services, Larry Kuthenrutzer, um, and he'll be talking about um, just his experiences as a, as a driver, a senior companion, many of the things that he volunteered with Missouri Agent Services as well. We'll get... Uh, um, We'll have our original hosts on here as well because the show wasn't just about me, um, even though now it is, clearly. Um, we have Josh Many, uh, who kicked off the show uh, with me, and uh, another person, Noel McAvoy. Uh, we hope to see them both this Friday. We'll also have Rowan Lemus on to do a fun little segment of Dude I Just Drew live on Wake Up Missoula. Um, that, that, that's pretty much it. We're going to try to do all this. And more, we'll also have Asaf Adonai this Friday as well. So we're going to have a pretty good show on Friday. We're going to try to keep it as timeless as possible so there's no news, no events, no city council report, just all fun and fun videos that have been made through the efforts of uh, Wake Up Missoula for the last five years. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. And stay tuned for this Friday because this is going to be a big show. Thank you.